This is the head-to-head -head review between the HP Pavilion gaming laptop and the HP Victus with the Ryzen 5 5600H. Now, earlier in the year, I did a head-to-head -head review between the Pavilion and the Victus. Well, later last year, earlier in my... Anyway, and so I wanted to just come back to you with a review between the Ryzen version and the Ryzen version rather than having the Victus with the i5 compared to the HP Pavilion with the Ryzen 5. So that is what this review is. If you want to know my complete thoughts on like all the build quality and like comparisons in that respect, go check out that video at the end of this video. This one, we're just going to stick with the performance differences because I've already covered all that and I actually don't have the Pavilion in my studio anymore. If you're curious about the exact pricing and availability, if the HP Pavilion is still available when you're looking for it, you can head down in the description below and click those links. Now, if you do make a purchase through those links, we'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Okay, now let's get right into the performance benchmarks because that is what we're going to talk about in this video. For spec for spec, we have the HP Pavilion gaming laptop with 16 gigs of RAM, a 512 SSD, and GTX 1650, and the Ryzen 5 5600H. For the HP Victus, we have the Ryzen 5 5600H, the RTX 3050 Ti, 16 gigs of RAM, and a 512 SSD. Now jumping into Cinebench R20, you can see almost zero difference between the two laptops. As we head into Cinebench R23, again, they are neck and neck. And as we move into Geekbench, we see a slight difference, but that just mean, might be the way that the CPU is optimized inside of the laptop. Um, and you can see only a slight difference with single core and multi-core. But let's get into the real world test with 3D modeling so we can see if it's really worth that upgrade going from the GTX 1650 to the RTX 3050 Ti. There's been a bit of controversy around that topic and let's check it out now. So as you can see in Autodesk 3DS Max, there is a substantial increase in performance around the 40 to 50 point range for 3ds max as we move on to autodesk maya you can see again the 35 to 40 point increase from the gtx 1650 to the rtx 3050 ti in ptc creo you can see another increase in performance by choosing the newer gpu and then in solidworks again a more of a slight increase in performance nothing crazy in solidworks if you're going to be a solidworks or autodesk revit user i would definitely recommend getting a quadro workstation gpu over one of these gaming gpus you're just going to see so much more performance out of that workstation GPU because they are certified to run in those programs. Now, moving on to After Effects. Now, this is an area where we saw a little bit of performance increase with that GPU. Nothing substantial. I think you'd be pretty safe going with either one for After Effects. But if you want to make sure you have that slight increase in performance, I would definitely lean you towards the Victus. Now, as we get into video editing, now video editing is an area where we're going to have pretty even export times between the two. However, as we get into playback, we're going to see slightly better, uh, slightly less drop frames, so slightly better playback out of the Victus with the newer RTX 3050 Ti. So that's going to be the big difference. Export time is going to be roughly the same. Playback is going to be the big winner. Now, as far as temperatures, cooling is all concerned, I'm going to pull both of those results up on the screen now so you can see the temperatures, the thermals, and the export times depending on maybe the different thermal profiles inside of the laptop. Now keep in mind that because of the pavilion, um, for whatever reason, it doesn't have as much thermal control. So actually I really wasn't able to edit a lot of the thermal profiles and so you see those results here where the Victus had had the HP Omen Command Center that gave me more control over the uh, different modes inside of the computer. So that'd be one reason I would choose the Victus over the pavilion alone. It's just better control of your system. Now looking at DaVinci Resolve, you can see the export times coming up on the screen. Give or take, eh, does it make a big difference? Kind of, sort of, not really. Playback's going to be pretty solid in both of them uh, because DaVinci Resolve is optimized for DaVinci, uh, for playback uh, with these two laptops. Now, battery life is an area of question for many people, and as you can see, the battery life results coming up on the screen now. How I run these results is I do the Passmark Productivity Battery Life Test for the productivity. For streaming, I run a YouTube video on just you know continual streaming until the battery goes dead at about 35 to 40% brightness. 
for the Photoshop benchmark. That's the Puget Systems Photoshop benchmark on repeat until the battery goes dead. And then for the video editing, that's Premiere Pro 4K project on loop until the battery goes dead running through playback. So it's like you're just you know kind of playing back over and over until the battery goes dead. Now regarding the screen, they both don't have great screens. Now this is the non-upgraded screen. You can get an upgraded screen to get better color gamut range and color accuracy, but this is not the case for this model. So you can see the color gamut range is coming up on the screen now. Not that great. They're just you know, they're just bad. They're, they're budget friendly gaming laptops. If you want to get a better quality screen, I would upgrade it or go for something like the HP Omen with a better color accurate screen. Now, in regards to Photoshop, we're definitely seeing a little bump in performance with the HP Victus. Did they better optimize that Ryzen 5 5600H processor in the Victus? Perhaps, because we know that GPU does not make a substantial difference in performance um, when looking at Photoshop. It's mainly a CPU and RAM program. Uh, it, it loves a better CPU. It loves more RAM. It doesn't really care too much about GPU. And we had neck and neck CPU and neck and neck RAM for these two models. And so these are the results we're seeing here on the screen. Now, if you wanna see the head to head between the i5 version of the HP Victus and the Ryzen 5, definitely comment below and let me know. I've been considering doing that review. I'm just not sure how many people would actually want it. Otherwise, links are free to make a purchase, likes if this video has brought you some value and subs if you wanna miss out on the future uploads. I'll see you here in the next one.